What's going on gardeners? It's Monday, January 2nd, and it is a gorgeous start to the new year here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. But as early as it is in the year, believe it or not, we are already going to start seeds in mere days. Onion seeds to be exact. That's why on today's video, I'm going to show you six genius tips to have the most success growing onions that you ever had in your entire life. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. Onions grow differently than most of the common vegetables that we grow in our vegetable gardens and for that reason we need to treat them differently. Having success growing onions basically comes down to two different things, variety selection and timing. If you nail these two things, as long as you give them the basic cultural practices like fertilizing and mulching that they need to survive, they will thrive and practically grow themselves in your garden. The first tip I'm going to give you is going to be the age-old debate of should I grow my onions from onion sets or should I grow them from seed? My personal opinion through years of experience leads me that it is far better to grow onions from seed. And what you see right here are leeks that I grew from seed, but onions are in the same allium family, so they will look exactly the same as this when it comes time to transplant them. These leeks are ready for transplant. Your onions grown from seed will be ready for transplant when they're the same size as this, which is about six weeks after after starting them from seed. In my opinion and through my experience, I think onions are better grown from seed for two distinct reasons. The first reason is cost. Here I have $10 worth of onion seed, one packet I bought from Burpee, two are off the shelves at a local farming feed supply store, and for $10 I have about 900 onion seeds right here. So I can grow 900 onions right now for a $10 initial investment. If I were to buy onion set bulbs, it would probably cost me 10 times this. So you get a major advantage in cost when you grow them from seed. But the second reason I don't like growing onions from onion sets or onion bulbs, whatever you want to call them, is because of cultural cultural reasons, and that's because deep down onions are biennials. So with an onion, the very first year you plant them from seed, they will grow as a long tall grass, and then around the summer solstice they will begin to bulb. And then normally you would pull that bulb and you would harvest that onion. However, if there's no human around to harvest the onion, the onion will keep growing into the second season where it will eventually flower and go to seed. And that is the two year biennial life cycle of an onion. When you go out and buy onion sets, what you're buying is an onion that somebody started from seed and then they allowed it to grow and get basically about an inch in diameter. And then once it reached an inch in diameter, they pulled it up, they chopped the top off, and then they stuck them in a cool dry place place where the onions would basically go to sleep and enter dormancy. Then you essentially went out and you bought that dormant onion and then you want to plant that onion back in your soil and you hope that that onion will pick up where it left off. And in most cases that onion will. It will root and it will continue to grow and bulb like everything was fine. However, sometimes that storing and curing process tricks the onion and it thinks it's now the next calendar year. So when you plant that onion bulb, sometimes they will root and they will immediately start to go to seed or they will only bulb a little bit. And that's what I found to be very common when I would grow onions from sets. They would root, they would start to bulb, but they would only get to be about half of the size that I wanted them to be. And then they would kind of start to go to seed. So to me, their calendar was out of whack. When you grow onions from seed, you will never have to worry about that confusion because there will never be a dormant period where that onion will sit. It will continually grow and 100% of your plants will know that it is the first year and they will bulb properly. So in my experience, onions grown from seed are much more reliable bulbers and the bulbs get a lot larger. So growing onions from seed is the way that you get the biggest, best onions. The second tip to have the biggest, best onion harvest of your life is to select the proper varieties of onions for your unique latitude and the day length during your summer solstice. That's because onion varieties bulb based on the length of the day at the summer solstice. So you have to carefully pair your varieties to where you live in terms of latitude. Right now, I'm overlaying a map of the United States that shows different onion growing zones. And as you can see, the higher the latitude, 
the longer the length of the day is at the summer solstice, the shorter the length of the day is when you head to lower latitudes, and that holds true for anywhere in the world. Onion bulbing is triggered based on the day length during the summer. So if you were to, say, plant a long day variety of onion down at a low latitude, the lengths of the day during the warm season will never be long enough to trigger bulbing, so you'll get inferior onions. The same problem will happen if you plant short day onions at a high latitude. You'll get them into the ground too late, so they will begin to bulb too early, and it'll completely throw the onions out of whack, and you won't get proper development. It is very important that you pay the correct variety of onion to where you live in terms of your day length or you will not have good results. When you line up your latitude with day length types of onions, that is when the magic formula comes together and you get the perfect onion bulb. The third tip for the most successful onion harvest of your life is to nail the timing. That's because, as I previously explained, onions bulb based on the day length at summer solstice. So it's very important that you time your onions so they mature when the days are the longest during the summer. Here where I live at 34 degrees latitude, I love growing these yellow granex short day onions. And I, I live basically right on the border where I can plant short day onions and get away with some intermediate day varieties as well. And as you can see, this short day variety has a days to maturity at 110 to 160 days. So that is the magic number that I need to work backwards from to figure out when I need to start my seeds and transplant my onions. So what you want to do is you want to take that 110 to 160 number and meet it somewhere in the middle, let's say somewhere around 140 days. So we want to take a day in early to mid-July and subtract 140 days from it, and that is about when we want to set out our onion transplants. Now your onion transplants are ready about six weeks after you start your onion seed. So you'll do 140 days plus 42 days for the transplant. So you basically need to be about 200 days in advance of your longest days of the summer when you begin sowing that seed. Now now I know that may sound really complicated, so I'm going to give you some dates. For me, I have found the best time for me to start my onions from seed is about January 15th, and then I transplant them out into my garden at March 1st. And during March 1st, we're still getting frosts and freezes, and that is okay because most of the coldest weather is behind us, and onions are hardy to about 18 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can plant them when hard freezes are still happening. As long as your garden soil is workable, you can plant your onion transplants. So wherever you live, you may need to massage those dates a little bit by a couple weeks on either side to figure out when the best time to plant your onions are. But for the overwhelming majority of us, we'll be starting the seeds during winter and we'll be transplanting them out either at late winter and early spring. And that will give them enough time so they hit that peak bulbing phase right when our days are longest. And when the onions hit maturity a couple weeks after the solstice, that is when you're going to get the absolute largest bulbs. So for me, I want to be harvesting my onions somewhere around July 10th to July 20th. If you can do that, you're going to get the largest onions possible, so time it out. The fourth tip to having the best onion harvest of your entire life with the biggest onions you've ever grown is to grow them in loose and loamy soil. Onions are a bulbing plant. We want to eat the bulb. So the less resistance in the soil, the bigger the bulbs can get because they don't have to fight against soil resistance. You don't want to grow your onions in heavy and dense soil. It's very important that it's loose and loamy. And this is the soil that I grew my onions in last year, uh, and they were the biggest, best onions ever. It's basically a mix of native sand and turkey compost. So there's a ton of organic matter in it. So when it comes to growing onions, make sure you grow them in as loose of soil as possible. Now, if you live in an area that has more of a heavy soil, you're going to want to work in as much organic matter as possible, like compost. Try and mix in at least two to three inches of compost into that top layer to get it really loamy, because onions, for the most part, grow in the top 10 inches of your soil. Then, after you plant them, make sure that you amend it with a nice mulch layer, because that mulch layer is going to decay and add a lot of organic matter, and it's going to be a very low resistance medium when that onion starts bulbing to push out against. So that loose, loamy soil with lots of compost and mulch spreads apart very easily. It'll keep the onions nice and moist, so they'll be able to get really big without resistance. 
The fifth tip to have the biggest, best onion harvest of your life is to interplant them with other compatible plants. Now last year, like I mentioned, I grew my onions in this bed, but I interplanted them with my peppers. And peppers are the ideal companion crop to grow alongside onions. And that's because their root systems exist at very different levels. Onions pretty much sit on the top three or four inches of soil, and then the roots drop down a few inches deeper. They're fairly shallow rooted, so they don't really exist beyond that top eight to ten inches of soil. Peppers, on the other hand, the root systems are much larger and they go deeper. So the root systems don't directly compete with each other, and for that reason, they make great companions. The onions benefit from the relationship because once the peppers start getting tall in May and June, when it starts getting really warm, the peppers will start shading the onions and it will give them that late season heat protection that they desperately need. Your peppers will also benefit from interplanting onions because the onions are part of the allium family and they smell bad to peppers. So they have a natural pest repellent property. So all of your pest prone plants do great when you interplant onions in between them. They also like the same style of fertilizing. So they benefit from kind of like a 555-10-10-10-20-20-20 style of fertilizing. Very balanced fertilizing benefits all of the plants. These are the things you have to consider when you interplant your onions. Make sure they like the same types of fertilizer. Make sure that the other plant you're planting next to the onions benefits from the pest repellent properties. So for example, I would I wouldn't want to plant my onions along with watermelon or zucchini because the vines are going to crawl all over the place and it's going to block and cover the onions. That would be a no-no. But upright plants that get a lot of pests, like tomatoes and eggplant, they are fantastic to interplant with onions because the roots don't directly compete. They like the same types of fertilizers and the nightshades will greatly benefit from the pest repellent properties of the onions. This is how you can have as few pests as possible in your garden while getting the most yield per square foot. Last year I made a comprehensive video all about interplanting onions for best results and I'll make sure to link to that video above if you want more information on how to do it. And the sixth tip to have the biggest best onion harvest of your life is to run drip irrigation and make sure that you fertilize them properly. I had the best success of my life running drip irrigation last year and that's because onions like being in a consistently moist but not wet environment and nothing does that better than drip irrigation. That's because it very slowly waters the ground so that water can gently soak in and penetrate deeply into the soil and you don't need to water them all the time. When you pair drip irrigation with proper mulching, one deep watering about a week or so is usually enough to keep the soil evenly moist and keep the onions very happy. Now when you're growing onions, you have to understand that they have several stages of life and they're also very heavy feeders, so they do benefit from a stronger, more consistent fertilizing regimen. When you transplant your onions as transplants, what you want to do is you want to throw down something like an organic 555 fertilizer into the planting hole and maybe dust it with a little bit of bone meal because high phosphorus in the very beginning is very good to help them establish roots. Onions are very vigorous so they will root in a few days. After that you really want to give them a high nitrogen fertilizer because they start off as basically a blade of grass. So you're fertilizing grass in the beginning basically. If you like using a soluble fertilizer something like miracle Grow All-Purpose 24 816 is great for the first couple months of an onion's life because all of that nitrogen really gives the grasses a big boost. If you want to stay completely organic, you can use blood meal because that is an organic source of nitrogen that breaks down and feeds them very quickly. Now, once the onions establish and the greens get very tall, about 12 inches or so tall, and they start thickening up and you think you're going to start seeing bulbing, that is when you want to back off the high nitrogen fertilizer and you want to switch to a balanced fertilizer like a soluble 20 2020. Jack's All Purpose 202020 is perfect for this, so is Miracle Grow Tomato 181821 because the numbers are very close together. That's because you don't want to give too much nitrogen and too much green growth. You want them to bulb. So you want to lower that nitrogen number to encourage the bulbing. If you keep them adequately moist and give them enough food, you will get the biggest, most awesome onions you've ever seen as long as you followed all the other tips in this video. If you're new to growing onions and you don't know where to start because so much of your success 
success will hinge on variety selection and timing. What I actually recommend you do that first season is to select several different varieties in your growing zone and also stagger some plantings. So take two or three different varieties and then do the math that I laid out earlier in this video and arrive at an ideal planting date and then start a third of your seeds a week early, a third of the seeds exactly during that week that you came up with, and a third of the seeds later by one week. And then plant them out in three different waves and observe how they grow throughout the season and see which wave bulbs the best. And that will be your ultimate onion planting time. So since you have three sample plantings over one season, you will be able to see how they perform and that will be like years worth of growing all in one single season. So you'll know exactly what the best varieties are to grow and how to time them. And that right there are six genius onion planting tips that I've employed that have helped me be super successful growing onions. And I think if you follow them, you can crack the code and be successful growing onions too. So everybody, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you found it helpful, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in real life in my garden, they're all linked down below in my Amazon storefront link in the video description. So expand that, click on the link to see everything I use in real life. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. I love it.